This morning, I want to start out with a quote. It's a quote from Isaac Newton, of all people, from his book, The Principia Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy. I'm sure you've all read that. In it, he says, this most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. Like I said earlier, this is the month of definitions. And we are going to start our month of definitions with defining the ultimate it. It is an it because it has no gender, for it is actually all genders, as well as all colors, creeds, all entities, all beings, it is, the all, it is the all of all. It is an it because it has no age. It is ageless, timeless. Time holds no power over it. There is no beginning and no end. It is the alpha and the omega and everything in between. It is all we see. It is all we cannot see ever before and ever after. It is, and sometimes, called light. The luminescence of the stars themselves, the brightness of the moon from the earth, and the power of the sun, a light that never dims, a light that warms the heart. Nikola Tesla wrote everything is light, he said. In one of its ray is the fate of nations. Each nation has its own ray in the great source of light, which we see as the sun. And remember, no one who has existed is dead. For they transformed into the light and so still exist. The secret lies in the fact that the light particles restore their original state. Its light lives in the illumination of love, that illumination of love that's found in a baby's eyes, you know, that special look, or a puppy's gaze, you know, that special look, even a cat sometimes. It is love and called by many that name, unconditional, non-judgmental, full and complete, giving all to all as all believe, offering the infinite possibilities of the universe every day to all its creations. It is intelligence, a divine intelligence, as they say, all knowing, all seeing, all being, omniscient, omnipresent, omni-benevolent, and quite omni-delicious. <laughs> no problem is too hard for it to solve, and no condition is too difficult for it to resolve. It is expansive, without limits of time, space, or dimension, in a constant state of creation from before the Big Bang 14 billion years ago. It is neutral, impersonal in its creativity, providing as it is guided by our thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and declarations, the experiences we have. And therefore, it is creative, always curious, individualizing its creativity in all its creations. In Genesis 1, chap chapter 1, uh, verse 27, it says something like this, And God created the human in its image. In the image of God, it created them. Male and female, it created them. 
Now, the important word in the Hebrew of this phrase is selim, usually translated as the word image. But it actually means to carve or cut. So thus, as far as Genesis goes, that we are all cut from its cloth. Selen also describes a resemblance or uh, one being or something being a representative of it, an authority, a creative power. That's the attributes of it, the attributes of the divine. That is what it is saying in Genesis about humans. The image Genesis talks about is not what it looks like physically, but what it is, what it can do, and that's create. This it we're defining today is energy, pure, powerful, singular in scope and force, limitless and ever-present, creative and authoritative. Again, from Nikola Tesla. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. One of his greatest quotes, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. It is all energy. It is all a vibration. And that frequency that we become in touch with, that we vibrate at, with it, brings forth our greatest life. It is science. The most beautiful and most profound experience is the sensation of the mystical. It is the sower of all true science. He to whom this emotion is a stranger who can no longer wonder and stand wrapped in awe is as good as dead. To know that what is impenetrable to us really exists, manifesting itself as the highest wisdom and the most radiant beauty which our dull faculties can comprehend only in their primitive form. This knowledge, this feeling is at the center of true religiousness. That was Albert Einstein in the book, The Merging of Spirit and Science. The merging of spirit and science. And if you're here very often, you hear about, as I hear about, how science has merged with spirit with the philosophy and teaching, especially of new thought. It has been proved by the scientific me method. So many things as the years go by. It is called by many names in many cultures, this it. It is called Atman, Brahman, Allah, Wakantanka, the creator, the great maker, Elohim, El Shaddai, Yahweh, Jehovah, Adonai, the great spirit, source, the infinite one. The Bible lists hundreds of different names of it. The word, the term Yahweh is used over 6,000 times. I have read Jehovah over 7,000 times. And so too in many other spiritual and holy texts throughout the millennium, throughout the all time, and maybe even beyond this planet. Science of mind calls it first cause, the great I am, love and law, and many others. It is a noun and a verb and an adjective. It is a moving thing, a living energy expressing in every cell, molecule, and atom in the universe. It is indescribable at times, yet defines that which is the utmost, the transcending and the preeminent. It is hallowed, 
it is sanctified, revered, glorified, respected, rejected, honored, prayed to, affirmed, loved, so many things. And in varying degrees, it is worshipped, even idolized, idealized, followed, and too many times feared or begged unto. Those last two are not part of its definition. That is a human weakness, a human ignorance when it is feared or we believe we must beg unto it. That is not its way. It is in you and in all things everywhere, revealing itself through you and all things everywhere and experiencing life as you and all things everywhere. <laughs> my kidney stones years ago, my standing ovations here and there, my divorce and my times inspiring others, all are in and through the divine presence revealing itself through me, as me, and for me. And so too, you. It is outside of each of us and all around us, but it moves most effectively within us. For that is where it resides for you, for me. It is our who, our how, our what, right where we are. Ernest Holmes, who wrote the book Science of Mind, wrote, there is a divine urge within everyone to know more, to be more, and to express more. And I have found that the thing we are searching for is the thing we are searching with. It is in what we physically see, but most deeply, what we mindfully envision, what we see from the inside out. It is that universal universal dictionary in that universal dictionary the definition of it the definition of god the ultimate ultimate it is you you are that definition of god you are that ultimate it. Menoimus, a first century Arab Gnostic wrote, abandon the search for God. Instead, take yourself as the starting place, which inspired Ernest Holmes years later to remind us that we shall never encompass God and yet we shall always be in God and of God, of it. This consciousness we live in, think through and with, that is an innate, an inward, an indwelling intelligence through which the one mind, which this it is, God, expresses itself as your mind and my mind, yet it is all God's mind, individualized, personalized, There is but one hand in the universe. It is God's hand. Whenever you have felt that your hand was empty, it's because you have believed yourself something separate from God, separate from it. Your hand is God's hand. My hand is God's hand. It reaches out through these. It's only hands to give its gifts. That was from Emily Cady's book, How I Used Truth. I want to tell you a quick little story from Khalil Gibran. He tells a story about how in the ancient days when the first quiver of speech came to my lips, he says, 
I ascended the holy mountain and spoke unto God, saying, Master, I am thy slave. Thy hidden will is my law, and I shall obey thee forevermore. But God made no answer. And like a mighty tempest, just passed away. And after a thousand years, I ascended the holy mountain and again spoke unto God, saying, Creator, I am thy creation. Out of clay hast thou fashioned me, and to thee I owe my all. I owe mine all. And God made no answer. But like a thousand swift wings passed away. And once again, after a, another thousand years, he writes, I climbed the holy mountain and spoke unto God again, saying, Father, I am thy son. In pity and love thou hast given me birth, and through love and worship I shall inherit thy kingdom. And once again, God made no answer, and like the mist that veils the distant hills, he passed away. And after another thousand years, I climbed the sacred mountain and again spoke unto God, saying, My God, my aim and my fulfillment, I am thy yesterday, and thou art my tomorrow. I am thy root in the earth, and thou art my flower in the sky. And together we grow before the face of the sun. And then God leaned over me and in my ears whispered words of sweetness. And even as the sea that unfoldeth a brook that runneth down to her, he enfolded me. And when I descended to the valleys and the plains, God was there also. Hmm. The definition of God is not some entity that wants to enslave you or that you owe anything to or that you must bow down and worship like a king in his kingdom, nor does it pity you. For God loves you and grows with you and is there for and as you. And it does so for all, whether in the mountains, valleys, or on other planets, and for all time and continuum. It is not defined by its fatherly aspects, as it's commonly stated, any more than its motherly aspects, for it is all and more, much, much more. It is he, she, they, them, you, me, us, and all. It is the I am that you are. To paraphrase Meister Eckhart, the eye through which I see God is the same eye through which it sees me. My eye and God's eye are one eye, one seeing, one knowing, one love. It is the ultimate it. It is in you, with you, experiencing life through you, as you, and for you, right here, right now, and forevermore, no matter what. Thank you so much. Namaste.